CBN News traveled to Malaysia to discover the truth about the treatment of Muslim converts to Christianity. I joined some Christians on a hike through the jungle, about a two-hour journey from the capital city of Kuala Lumpur. We wanted to investigate an isolated encampment where some Christian converts say they've been taken to force them to return to Islam. We're in thick jungle right now, about 300 meters from the re-education center. This is a private place. Few Malays are even aware that it exists. And we have to go through this thick jungle just to get there. So we'll go see what we can find. Maneuvering through vines and over ravines is a bit treacherous. As darkness approaches, we use a machete to clear a path. We risk possible arrest if detected. Finally, we see the camp through a clearing. The Malay government calls these facilities retreat centers. Muslims willingly come here to strengthen their faith. But in the Malay language, a sign just beyond the foliage calls this facility a purification center. And if staying here is voluntary, then why the tight security? A fence and barbed wire. Some Muslim converts to Christianity say they've suffered beatings and torture at centers like this one. We talked to one who refused to go on camera because of fear he would be taken back to one of these faith purification facilities. He only agreed to talk on audio if we changed his voice. Through a translator, he explains how religious officials tried to reconvert him to Islam. They were clearly angry and they wanted to kill me. But they did not harm me physically. I know of many others who were. They force you to recite Islamic prayers and the Quran, to do all the things you're supposed to do as a Muslim. They're trying to force us to believe what we can't believe. These re-education centers come from the power of darkness. Another former Muslim, who we will call Nathan, lost his property, job, and family after officials learned he had become a Christian. He's hiding from the government, so we're also protecting his identity. He insists he'll never return to Islam and says his loss is gain. I've lost it all. Does it matter? I mean, Jesus has said in the word, what we should seek for is everlasting treasure. Like for me, I've counted my cost. You know, so I count my cost and, you know, I, I don't mind paying for it, even if it means losing my life. We've joined these Christians for a midweek service. We've also covered faces to protect them. Most are Malay ethnics. Traditionally, Malays are Muslim. Five years ago, there were less than 200 Malay Christians in the country. Today, there are an estimated 1,000 or more. That growth is a target of the government and its religious department. Last summer, officials halted the construction of this church building in Kelantan State. The religious department had said this place is a Muslim place and the people here are all Muslims, so you have no right to come in and evangelize the people here. Pastor Lazan says most locals here are not Muslims. Those who have become Christian need a church building. We have been gathering in houses and sometimes under trees, but we wanted to have our own place for worship. But I believe no matter what the cost we have to pay as Christians here, our people will be followers of Jesus. And that belief has inspired many Malay Christians to share their faith with others. I joined several evangelists as they fed the hungry and prayed for the sick. This evangelist says angry Muslims beat him up and smashed his car. Yet he says he presses on because many of his countrymen are receptive to the gospel message. When I began to pray for the sick, we saw instant results sometimes. People were just amazed at the miracles. They wanted to hear about the power behind the healing. And they received Jesus so easily. These Christians from the Temiar tribe say Muslims lured some fellow believers in a neighboring village away from faith in Christ. I have a sister who was a Christian, but has become a Muslim now. Muslims came and gave them money, a house, and a regular supply of food. And what if Muslims come to their village? No way. This village will stand for the Lord. And remember Nathan, who lost everything when he became a Christian? He keeps busy these days sharing Christ with other Malays. Who is going to reach to my own people if it's not me? The joy in Christ transcends even persecution. The joy of loving Christ is more than 
more than anything else. Gary Lane, CBN News, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia.